of themes. And uh, basically, there is a principle and application. I hope after this, maybe around the half hour of the talk, I want you have an idea what is uh, top themes, what top themes can do, because this is uh, in our surface analysis lab. You have an idea about the strengths and the weakness of the themes, and you can wisely select. Sometimes maybe you need to use XPS, sometimes maybe you need the themes, or maybe use other instrument. You have an idea about this. It's just the knowledge, knowledge that increases. And um, this, and at, be at beginning, I just like uh, briefly a few slides and tell you and what CAC2 we have. Maybe most maybe user already know like a CAC2 instrument. Maybe some is new. I just briefly and introduce this. And first, we have our most popular instrument like XPS. This purchased um, like uh, seven, eight years ago, but still, and uh, that is what. Uh, like new and <laughs> even the some stage some little program but still working very well especially the software and that is very user friendly and and very very useful for the chemical analysis and next is that is the uh, top themes that we today we talk about this top themes is a little bit old and uh, in 20 years and if some users use that you know and uh, there is some software and uh, operation and the design is not like that user friendly. Yeah, already 20 years old, but uh, we have some good news after the talk and I tell you. And the next is uh, FTR. In our level, we have two FTR and the right one is a regular FTR. This is for like a basically box sample like powder, film, solution, gel, and all that you can do this. But for microspot, if you're doing some, for example, you have a sample, you want to do the mapping, or on the sample, you have a small area that is different that you want to identify, and we have a left one, we have max scope. This we call the micro FDR. So we can look at that area, get an image, and then collect IR from there. And also, another good thing is both we have ATR mode. This ATR mode is uh, is very useful and uh, almost uh, the sample preparation free, and that you don't need to uh, spend time on preparation just for the sample. Especially like this left one, this ATR crystal is uh, integrated inside. You just click button, they will come out. You don't need uh, like install and uh, take out. It's very easy to use. And this one is a surface profiler. And maybe most users know we have this stylus profiler meter. And this uses a tip to contact the surface, and make a profile like a right of this, and give you like high information, roughness, and the profile surface, especially do a coating of film, and we can give the information. We give very reliable information. On the left, this is optical. This is in the AFM room. We also have this one. And this is uh, for some sample, maybe it's not uh, like a gel, like a little sticky, and maybe this optical is useful for that. And also, this optical profile meter can get a, a quick 3D image compared to the right. The stylus profile meter, you can get a 3D, but take time. But the left one is much quicker. Okay, another one is the uh, ellipsometry. So this is, uh, we can get the thickness of the film and uh, the optical constant information for the film. For some film, like polymer film, you can easily to remove part of that and use the profile meter to get a thickness. For some uh, inorganic, like a zinc oxide, zinc oxide, like this film, you, once you get the ARD or some, you made the film, you are hard to remove. You want to get the information of the thickness of the constant, you can use this ellipsometry. This basically use the light, get through of the top film and reflect from the interface substrate. And then you can, during a simulation, you can get a thickness. And even like this one is a thickness map. We also have a synthesizer, can measure the 
the, the potential and the size from nanometer to micron. Okay, so above is uh, just uh, what we have in our lab. And uh, so next we'll talk about the, the top themes. The name from this people sometimes know the mass spectra. Why is the themes? Why is the top? And top is a method and uh, the time of light. The themes is the secondary ion mass spectrum. So when we learn this instrument, we also should distinguish about the top mass. Top mass, most talk about is like a MODI, like a matrix assistant laser distribution and ionization. This on the chemistry department, some facility they have this MODI that were often used. But that method that is a sample mixed with a matrix and they use a laser. They use a laser, basically ionization of this to get a fragment. And then they use the top, this method. It is separated the mass, get a spectrum. So on the left here, the top is a typical, that is a moldy spectrum. You see the mass is 92,000. So that is pretty big. That basically is a whole mass, and then they break them, and they are some even the whole mass, and that is pretty high mass spectrum. So that is this spectrum. So lower one is all from the secondary ion mass spectrum. Secondary ion is the next slide that we talk about the, the schematic that shows that. So this spectrum typically is from zero to 200, 250. So most of the thin spectrum is mass. It's not that big, like 10,000 something. Mostly maybe below like 500. Why? Because that is that is molecular after this primary ion to strike the surface, they break them, break them to the small fragment. But for this one, for the model, they use laser, they can, they can, they can contain that is a big mass, that is different. So we talk about top themes and the different for this. This one is a whole material analysis. Our top theme is, is just a surface analysis. The next slide is this is a, a typical like a primary ion and the strike the sample and most get the center area, most get like atomic like ion element information and from surrounding that is a, like a small molecule and large molecule. So basically this is a fragment from the center area because the strong energy you get it much break them smaller and most get element. Like and as long as they are damaged less, you can get the big and fragment. So this is a primary ion. Primary ion strike your surface in your sample, and then they will get uh, some implant in implant of the sample, and then this is a cluster, and you get a positive ion, negative ion, and also backscattering and a neutral. So basically use primary ion to strike the sample surface that generates this so different. So if how we detect, we basically this sample and detector, between the detector and the sample, we apply our electric field, positive or negative. And then we can get the positive ion or negative ion. So we apply electric field. So if that is neutral, so they cannot get there, so they will pump it away because they are not charged. So that's why if you analysis some like a novel get novel that is a metal like a platinum like a gold surface, you gold surface you should get you think about it, you do XPS other things for the gold you have a should have a very strong peak but you seems you get a very very small and the peak because the gold come out from surfaces, they are not ionized, they are neutral, they just pump it away. And then like a graphite, also you get a very low count. Graphite is just like a C2, C3, they pump it away. They are not rich detected. So if the ion is, uh, if this element is ionized, like sodium, 
like lithium, this is very easy to analyze. So even if you have a small amount, you will get a very strong peak from detect. So this method is that, uh, you know, detect the ion. You have to be the surface, the easy to ionize. Okay, so we have this, the cluster, the positive ion, negative ion, and then we use a positive model, we can get a positive ion, this mass spectrum. Negative model, we can get a negative. So that is what happened on the surface. So this mass spectra, this sample, this primer ion, so this apply electro, the detector. You see, we apply electro field, we apply the electro field. So this kinetic energy applied to the fragment. We call the fragment is this node like other element, you get like just like silicon, just hydrogen, oxygen. No, this is a fragment. They can be C2H3, CH3, like OH, like a, yeah, like this kind of like fragment combination together, C8, C6, H6, something like this combination, they can come together. So we call this mass fragment. So this fragment come out and all the fragment based on the these vector field, they give the energy, kinetic energy is the same, you see. And then, so use this equation, you see this mass, if the mass is bigger, the velocity will be slower. If it's mass small, it's a small mass, this V will be big. So in this certain distance, so the smaller mass fragment will come to detect them. Uh, okay, sorry. So the smaller mass will come to detect them the first, and the big mass will come to this and uh, later. So we use this method. This is called the time of flight method. Time of flight, certain of the flight of time, and this they can distinguish this mass, and then they get a spectrum and get a mass spectrum. Okay, so we talk about these themes and. Uh, Maybe you heard about the dynamic seams and the stack seams. What's this difference? The stack seams, dynamic seams, the difference is the dose. We talk about use the primary ion and strike the surface and the analysis, what fragment, what is the element on the surface. So if the dose of the ion is huge, and so the surface, because this is a, seems is a dist, destructive method, destructive method, they, they break the surface, the molecule, and then make them, okay, pump it away or go to detect it, the destructive method. So if the dose of the primary ion is huge, they can quickly can make a crate of this. So this is called a dynamic seams. If there is a dose of the primary ion, is very low and then the surface can survive a long time they just knocked here 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 like that and this dose is very low and then these uh, static seams time time of light we our top seams time of light seams that is the static seams that means that the dose the primary ion dose is very low that means on your Damage on your surface, they will have a damage, but the damage on your surface is very low compared to dynamic seams. And the dynamic seams that is in the, some university have this, especially the semiconduct, the company, they have this, and they want to quickly do a depth profile, go down, and then they use this. For our surface analysis, we don't want to damage it so quick, so we use static top seams. So this is a, a definition of this and stack seams like this and primary ions, but here, 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 and then there are those and uh, typically like 10 power 12 and to make this because atomic surface density is uh, 10 power to 15. So after this analysis still that the surface is in, and just a one, uh, one percent of the surface of strike by this and uh, uh, ion. So this is a uh, static seams. This is a 
this is a dynamic seams. You see dynamic seams, that is uh, the quicker is overlap this area and strike again, again, and it's go deeper and deeper. So I often think about it like this, like a, a rain, like a drizzle, and even long time, maybe half hour, uh, one or two hours, the surface of the floor is not wet yet. But like this, like heavy rain, and just uh, maybe a few minutes, the whole surface is uh, damaged. And yeah, the top layer is removed. So this, yeah, this is a dynamic seams and uh, static seams difference. This is a uh, old image and uh, see the damage. And this is uh, STM scanning tunnel microscope or silicon surface. This is before, this is after this top seams analysis. You see the most area is still good, only partially some area is, is damaged. Okay, so we know the difference is the dynamic seams and the top seams and what we have and uh, we interest in the surface analysis, we use the stack seams. And uh, like a chemic, chemical, like that seams and um, in, yeah, you see, I think I have one and uh, most uh, the industry, like semiconductor industry, they have uh, dynamic seams. They want to do uh, and the quality control of the doping and they use uh, the profile and routinely and they use dynamic seams. Okay, this is a, a schematic of the this you see here the seams. That is what we have. And this sample, this liquid metal ion gun in the, in the got the analysis. This is a spider gun is we can use the gas gun like a cesium oxygen argon gas to spot the surface and then do analysis. We can do the depth profile and yeah, do the analysis. And then go to this ESA, electrostatic analyzer to refocus, get a certain distance, get detect. So this is uh, a primary, the ion source that are often used. And in our top seams, we use the gallium 69. And some use the gold indium and the C60. Now, primary, they use uh, in the new like instrument, they mostly use the business. And so you see, our gallium is a 69. And so this compared to others, that is smaller. So smaller ion, this advantage is easy to focus and is much better to get a spatial resolution when you do the mapping. But because this is small, the high energy, this damage, and uh, this damage, this is uh, very hard. To, uh, so it's hard to get a, like a higher mass. So for our gallium, we mostly get like a 200 and less than 300. So if you this mass like this, you can get a 500, 600, the fragment. So majority now use the business. Okay, this slide show this top seams instrument, what function, what is the mid post we use. And uh, for this instrument, we, get, uh, we can get a three different uh, type of data. We can get a spectrum, we can get a mapping, and a depth profile. So that is most we use. And uh, we can strike a surface, we can adjust from, okay, from zero, from one micron, go to like 800 micro, we can different area, we can average, then quickly get a spectrum. Based on the peaks, we can identify all oh, this metal, this element, this trace element, or that fragment we have based on the spectrum, we can identify that. We also can choose certain peak, and uh, certain peak, like, uh, like copper, like metal, like fragment, like C2S3, like some, like this fragment, and then look at the area and get a mapping. You map certain fragment, certain mass, and then you can see the distribution. You can get a mapping. This mapping and the new top seams, you can get a resolution is like a 70 nanometer. Of course, cannot compete with the PM and the EDX, but that for the mass mapping, this less than 100 nanometer is pretty good. We can get this because our XPS we both the analysis bulk and we cannot do the mapping of XPS. 
these things, the surface analysis, you can get the mapping. Also, you can do depth profile. So in this system, we have two gun. One use a gas gun to start make a crater. And then we use a primary ion, the gallium. And in the future, maybe the business, we can analysis, get the mass spectra, and then get the layer, get analysis, and then along the depths, we can get our 3D like a structure. What is the distribution along the depths of the element, how the change. So this is a spectral mapping and the depth profile that is three the major and the function and we can get um, from the themes. Okay, this is an example of the spectrum from MOS2. From MOS2, the sample surface getting in, you can get this. This getting is from the primary. And then this MO, you can see this MO not like single peak. They have multiple peak. Why they have multiple? Because this MO, even they the one atomic number, but they have many isotopes. And I sort of they have different mass, so all the peak that is you can find. And that is good, you know, you can identify isotope. Isot Sometimes, you know, if you find a, a peak, 98, just 98. And uh, so the, use a peak ID and suggest, okay, uh, MO, they have a 98 peak. You think that maybe that is MO. But you think about your sample surface doesn't have the mole. Why they have this MO? And then you can use this isotope, this feature. And if you use MO, they should have all of these isotopes. If you have 98, that is MO, you also have, should, should have 96, 92, because when you do the experiment, use MO, you didn't select just the MO 98. You just naturally select this MO from, yeah, this nature. If it's naturally, is uh, have, they should have all of these isotopes. If you, your sample have all the peaks, the ratio also match for this, you can get the conclusion, your surface have MO. If you just have 98 peak, it doesn't have these peaks, you can say, okay, there's something else, just a mess, and same as this MO 98 is not. Yeah. So this, uh, I thought of this feature is good to give you this uh, more confidence in what element on the surface. This MO, this MOS, this MOS2, because after they break, they can break a different fragment like this. And it, as I said, the lithium, sodium, like uh, potassium, they are very ion easy ionized. So there, even you have a little bit of contamination, you can get a strong peak for this. Other like this, this area often has some hydrocarbon, like um, you get combination from from the air. So hydrocarbon peaks often this area have. So this is a typical spectrum. So this is a PET spectrum, and from these are forty three here. You can see this. This is a resolution. The mass resolution is quite high, so it is close to 9600. Yes. Sometimes it gives this, and why, how you can label this, and some is very close. And we can use a function of the software called peak ID. If you use a peak ID, you label, you, you hug one peak up there, and then they, based on the database, they give you for this, you see, C3H7, that is 43.05. And this CH3, silicon, this point 43.004. If you, resolution if not good, all 43, you see broad peak. But at the good, the resolution, you can yeah, separate this. No, okay, this from the CH3. And uh, these are C3H7, these are from different uh, peaks. So these uh, use high resolution and also this uh, peak ID can identify these peaks.
Okay, next, this is a mapping. This is MOS2 flakes. So this is a MOS2 and one layer on silicon surface. You can see this bright means higher and concentration. So this is a silicon, silicon mapping, silicon ion. So you can this. So this is the MO, this is the oxygen, this S, this S2 actually, S2. S is a 16, this S2 is, so you can get this mapping for this, and this uh, tungsten sulfide. And use this one layer, probably you can use other method, I don't know, EDX can, can get a good image or not, because this is just one layer, EDX mostly get like a more deeper, especially for the light element, that is not very good. But use uh, seams, you can get a nice yeah, image of the, this, even the more layer, you can get a nice image. So this is another example, is uh, uh, aluminum metal matrix composite, and the treatment. For this, is the mapping, you, you get the aluminum, you can see most area aluminum, and this area, and this edge, and this magnesium, and this is uh, silicon. And here, this area is uh, lithium. So this is another like a polymer and uh, biotin. This is a pattern on the PT and the PFP. So this is the CN. This this both from the pattern of the biotin. And here I want to show you this. You can see the pattern clear and the CN. But for this, if you I can actually see this here, 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 this. But this count is much lower. So why? Because this mass is two, two, 227, this 26. So use our like getting easy to break them. Break them. CN is uh, very strong and we can get this mass pattern. But this, the big fragment, most, this breaks them to smaller and this count from still keep this big mess, it's very little. So that's why this contrast is very low. I hope in the future, and we use or uh, like a different uh, uh, primary ion, like a bismuth cluster can enhance this signal and get this contrast to get better. So this is just background from PET and the PFP. So next is uh, talk about this, Depth profile. So this sample, we use a gas gun to make a crater, actually make a new surface. And then we use the primary ion to analysis. So make sure, so every time you make edge, the new surface should be much bigger than this analysis. Otherwise, this may be analysis from the edge or affected by the existing surface. So this is the idea, so you use this Gas gun liquid and analysis. So here I show you this idea is uh, still talk about top seams, dynamic seams, what difference. So this is you see this area, the sea surface, this this color is analysis. This white is spotted, not analysis. This is similar to our similar like uh, our XPS. We seems XPS, we just analyze the surface. We have a new surface, we measure this surface. We know what element concentration all we get. And then we spot like a five or 10, depends on how quick you want, or 20 seconds, you spot that. When you during sputtering, this information, all this is gone. You just pump it away. You know the analysis here. And then you have a new surface here, and then you use the analyzer to analyze this surface, what element, what concentration you have. And then you spot away and analyze here. You get a point here, point here, and then you draw a line. You know this element along the depth, how they are, how they change. So that is the idea and talk seams and XPS to that profile. I show this, this is the dynamic seams, this do analysis. This is similar like an atom probe. And we also have atom probe in, in the sediment group. So this, they have information for X, Y. And they also, for, for example, from here, they spot this edge. 
this all this this part this information this go to the analyzer to analysis what element they have they also memorize this x y z and then they have that information and the x y z and they go to here XYZ have the information, you have the element of information as you hear. And then you have here, here, and then they re reconstruct, get a 3D information. For that dynamic themes, the analysis all the stuff. Here we only analyze here, here, and this pumped away. For this one, all the pumped, they go to the analyzer. So the dynamic themes for this depth profile, they give like a more accurate because this one will miss the step. For this one, not miss step, they just miss it all day. So that is dynamic seems like chemical seems the more like specialized for depth profile, for the quality control, for semiconductor industry stuff. So there's a difference. So our top seems in XPS even not that. So that is a position that is accurate, but still that is good for yeah, depth profile you see the element along depths of the change. So this is an example and for this is a boron implant in the silicon. You can see the boron in the, from surface to the to the 25 nanometer there is a concentration how the change works. These are not users and sample and we get the 20 nanometer indium gallium oxygen on silicon. You can see here the silicon is going up. And this is uh, like oxygen, like indium is going down here. And at the interface, that is a silicon oxygen. Yeah. See oxygen, that is it. Okay. Give you an idea of this. So this picture I show you, for example, they have a, I have a sample. This is a chromium nickel. This is multi-layer. super lattice is and six nanometer. So if you use a, uh, Spot the gun, you know the wisely choose use high energy in spot the gun. You spot too quick. You know you cannot distinguish this layer. Yeah. Like just like this, because you spot quickly get there, and they damage too much. So if you have a low energy the spot the ring, low energy spot the ring, like, like this example, I use a 5 kV getting spot the ring. And then you can see the difference, okay, the layer. You can get the very nice, that is the resolution of the Z resolution to this. So um, use the cesium and, cesium and argon spot, the cluster gun, if you wisely select this low energy, you can, calibrate, you can get a very nice this Z resolution, you even can get a nanometer. Yeah, scale resolution. Okay. So this uh, spot gun, this uh, resolution, and you, you can control the by this energy. Okay, so this slide I want to show you is this sort of where you can collect or raw data. You can collect, select a certain area, and uh, for example, like a 400 by 400 micron, and then you collect raw data. And then after that, based on the raw data, you can get all spectra from each different area. You can get a total ion image based on this. Based on the image, you can from here, for example, this 10 by 10 pixel, you can from here, you can get a spectrum. From here, you can get another spectrum. And then for a certain ion, you want to see distribution on this area, you can select a certain mass fragment and then get the mapping. So these are like save a lot of instrument time. Sometimes you have a limited fund that you want to, and the save time, the instrument that you want to post analysis, you can use this function, collect your data, and after that, you, you can do the process. Okay, so after this talk, and I want you to understand the old, old, old advantage of top themes. Advantage is the uh, top seams, you can detect all the elements, even the hydrogen helium. We know the uh, EDX cannot uh, detect the light element. For the XPS, you cannot detect the hydrogen helium, but as a seams, you can detect all the elements, hydrogen helium. You also can distinguish the isotope 
and the trace element, even PPM, PPB level, and a very low concentration can detect. And they, they are parallel detect all the mass because they surface. Surface. I talk about dynamic CMC, you, can, you have to select like a seven mass, you cannot detect all, but the top CMC surface analysis, you can select a 10 or even 20 mass, you want to do mapping, you can simultaneously to mapping all the different mass parameters. And you can do the 3D profiling with this. And also, uh, they have a charge compensation, you can analyze all the samples, the conductor, semiconductor, insulating, you don't need to like, do the conductive coating, you can analyze all the elements. So there's so many advantages, why that seems not like popular as X XPS. <laughs> they, of course, they have a disadvantage. So this disadvantage is this, first of all, this is use the primary ion strike surface to get fragment the destructive, they will damage your sample if possible. Second is uh, this quantification is very difficult. The most is uh, qualitative analysis because this even same element from a different uh, metrics from different sample, they give the yield quite different. You cannot uh, use this sample, that sample to compare is this just based on the peak. You want to do quantification, you have to have a standard sample knowing the concentration as same metrics use another sample unknown to compare, to get some idea about quantification. So mostly this is the qualitative. And also that is a very sensitive. And any sample you get in, you will get a lot of peaks there, a lot of peaks. So this data interpretation could be different. If you want to identify all the peaks, because each mass they have a peak, you want to get a combination for that, it can take like a, like a week, like take a month, and that is even impossible. So we have to focus the what peak, what area you interest. Okay, this. So that is this is a comparison for XPS top sim CDX and uh, and most of that I talk about the yeah the some of this is uh, destructive, not destructive. And this slide, if some of the interest, I can. I can share with you. And of course, in any time, if you have sample, you want to try, it seems you're not sure if you is suitable for your sample or not, you can talk to me. I talk about, so this, our top seems is um, 20, 20 year old. And even we have a gas gun and we need a lot of calibration, it's not very user friendly. As so the new top seems is much more powerful and I talked to the customer and they have the new so seems seems much user friendly and they said just turn on turn on the gas gun you don't need, never need it every time to do calibration that they're very easy to use in the software. So I said at the beginning I said I have good news is says we have our we will have our new top seams and but the bad news is for this big system they are not like uh, you can get it back like next day because once you place an order and the manufacturer make this, the lead time maybe take more than half a year. And if you stay here till next summer, you you have a good chance to use the new things. If you graduate very soon, probably <laughs> not. Okay, so this is uh, uh, what I talk and uh, next maybe I answer some questions.